I hope that even our young children can go to school with those things in their pocket, they can put it in their mouth and consume. We don't have regulation that effect. What we are saying that laws that are existing, they are good. But as a, as a society, as emerging issues come, we must be progressive in ensuring that the law that we have serve the best interests of our people. Yes. yes. And this actually just speaks into the whole aspect of the role of technology in all this. E-cigarettes, we have nicotine patches, we even have vapes that are a favorite among in this day and time. Um, also understanding the role of technology in all this and making sure that it also is in line with the health guidelines and protocols as well as the acts that we are trying to put in place and implement them further. How can these other industry players be brought into this conversation to understand why it's important to speak the same language? Um, I think technology is a necessary evil because it has so many benefits at the same time. <laughs> Unnecessary evil. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is really subjecting uh, us in some areas to a, a, a way that even when you have a regulation to implement them becomes very difficult. I can tell you, if you go to your phone line now, mm -hmm. you can go to a particular online uh, site, request for cigarettes. They don't even have those particular conditions. Yeah. Women saying that cigarette smoking is dangerous or um, is harmful to your health or it causes death. They don't have. You just take your phone, uh, go to that site, uh, request. You see a lighter coming to bring that packet of cigarettes. You don't care whether it will be taken by a mature person, a kid, it's happening everywhere. Even here, even we just request yeah. you to get somebody to bring it to you and just pay. Yeah. So, so what you're saying that even in our regulation, because it's so silent in so many issues, that even application of technology, because uh, what happens, there are some specific sanctions that should be upon those who are dispensing cigarettes even online. Yes. Today, in our current regulation, have no uh, no rule prohibiting that. So that even our kids will take their parents' phone, <laughs> they make their orders, the cigars are brought to them, and they smoke. So uh, we need to have, if there's goodwill and have a win-win situation, then the conversation should go beyond probably what the industry wants, but what is good for this country. Yeah. Even the industry prayer. Uh, yes, there is profit to be made. Even the country, there are tax to be collected. But remember, we are the parents. You may be a managing director of in that company, but you have kids also. You may not be smoking yourself, but your kids are smoking. When that cost comes, because you know, cigarettes. Uh, today we have a uh, big challenge of cancer in this country, and I can tell you, it has been scientifically proven that cigarette smoking. Or cancer that is, we have over 16 types of cancers that are related to tobacco smoking. These cancers are putting a lot of burden, cost burden, to our nation and to our families. You realize that sometimes you may think it's just about those who smoke. But if my father was a smoker at his early age, he has smoked tobacco through his life. Today he may be dealing with cancer. Who is taking the burden? It is me mm -hmm. and the society. And then I go and put pressure to a healthcare system. So we need to really appreciate that. People will just believe that the, the, uh, the, the nicotine or tobacco just cause the lung cancer. There are so many other cancers that are related to that. And I can tell you, uh, even in terms of environment, if I digress a little bit, you know that yeah. in Kenya, today we have, by 2017, we have about 3 million people who smoke daily. So, on average, if each one take on a one stick, 3 million minimum, what does that translate in one month? What does that translate in one year? In fact, the industry, the statistics that we have, the industry produces about uh, 17 billion sticks every year. Look at it. Uh, when you finish uh, smoking that puff, there's something called cigarette puff or filter. You just drop it anywhere. That thing contains nicotine. And that nicotine, it is soaked in water. When it, 
a storm water or goes to other cloud water, that is going to be fighting itself in the lives and the bodies of people. There's a study that has been done, research in Germany, mm -hmm. that they took those filters or the bath, they put them in water, they dissolve, then they put that water uh, in a controlled area with fish. Four days, the fish were dead. So, even in terms of our environment, mm -hmm. we, we, we may say that those, all of those who smoke, uh, really, uh, uh, the one is going to be affected. But I who do not smoke, I can tell you the effect of that is going to reach me at the end of the day. So we need to have very uh, honest discussion about the issue of cigarettes, beyond, even beyond age limit. Okay, so this argument that these new modern forms of um, e-cigarettes and vapes are thought to be less harmful does not hold any water in this particular conversation. No, it does not hold. It does not hold. It's not a reason. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a reason. Actually, uh, to me, it encourages, you know, because ultimately the desire of everyone is to have a smoke-free continent, mm -hmm. smoke-free country, smoke-free environment. Yes. All these things that we are sure quoting <laughs> in terms of uh, saying and telling they are less harmful, is not here, not there. It is actually a way of encouraging these people, the young people, the different ways of um, continuing to smoke. Yes. Actually, you know, we had even raised the issue of having uh, mentholated cigarettes. Mm -hmm. It has been banned in America. It is banned in India. It has been banned in Brazil. What we've been having, and we need actually to uh, have our uh, political leadership, uh, the, the, the parliamentarians, yes. take this matter uh, in, in, a, in an open discussion, in an open way, that we see what is important for this nation. Because there will be uh, a balancing act because where we have more informed people, especially in developed economies, and where everybody really appreciates the consequence of smoking, yeah. you see these prayers, they will move from those places, they come to where there are less or no regulations, okay. and that's where they are profiting from. All right. Now, as we close this particular conversation, maybe I'd like for you to address the issue of influencers because I, there was an article that I was going through, and we're living in a time where social media influencers are people who shape an opinion of the greater majority, and especially the younger people, but you find they are also the ones that are being used by industry players to further spread the message about this new form of uh, e-cigarettes, uh, nicotine patches and the likes. What will be your message to them this morning when it comes to redirecting this conversation and more so looking at the health benefits? Very briefly. Uh, I'll say that any responsible person, uh, yeah, regardless of your social study, uh, it's not right to just pray aloud with health. Mm -hmm. Health is divine. And once you lose it, you lose everything. So our message across the board should be, how do we help, especially those who have minimum knowledge, on how to appreciate the impact or the consequences of their choices, actions, and decisions. Uh, any action that is activated by the industry, globally or locally, there is a motivation that effect. But I would uh, please, that let's have the light motivation in order to dream. Yes, there are many ways of making money, doing mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. However, however, let anybody doing anything and taking whatever is taking is well aware. Because really, that to be honest, uh, tobacco. Sort of taking back a little bit, but tobacco very briefly has more than uh, 600. Components. Yeah. And when you smoke, they say there are so many, close to 7,000 chemicals that come out of that. And there are known uh, 69 uh, chemicals out of that that causes uh, cancer, but they are being applied 
for other consumable issues in the market. But people are aware. For example, the person that kills rats, mm. part of it is in, from the tobacco. But everybody has enough caveat that I'm consuming this, come from tobacco, but I know the consequence when I'm applying this. So what you're saying is that let people have the right information and make the right judgment concerning them mm -hmm. and the, the people and the environment as well. Absolutely, and we have a tweet by Johnson says, in this day and time, the government needs to realize the importance of influences to change the minds of the young people and especially conversations around cigarette smoking. Good. That is uh, what brings us to a close of this conversation. Uh, you can follow this conversation on both uh, other forms of media, uh, get to understand why this proposal has been put forth to change the, uh, rather to amend the Tobacco Control Act of 2007 and change the age limit of accessing tobacco and its associated products from 18 to 21 years. We have been speaking with John Masharia, who is the director of the African Center for Corrective and Preventative Action, helping us better understand why they are putting forth this particular proposal. Thank you so much. We wish you the absolute best as you continue on with this journey. Uh, Sante Sana. All right. I wish you a good super. Just Thank you. <laughs> we take a very quick breather, but we'll be right back with the next conversation. To stay with us.